In this modern day world, we have become programmed to think that our problems can be handled in the physical realm, as we have grown to live in a society filled with murder, violence, anger, depression, anxiety, suicidality, envy, jealousy, strife, division, war, poverty, greed, callousness, and so much more. We have become so disconnected from the spirit realm, so disconnected from what most call God, whose name is Yahuwah. We have positioned ourselves as the head of our own lives, filled with our own desires, dreams, goals, and will, which has left us weak and susceptible to the attack of the enemy, multiple principalities, and his armies. It is essential in these last and evil days that we wake up and take our place as soldiers and warriors in Yahuwah's army and equip ourselves in spiritual warfare and put on the whole armor of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. So where do we start? First, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. And it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in Yahuwah and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Yahuwah that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Yahuwah, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the besorah, the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, Amunah, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Ruach, known as the Spirit, which is the word of Elua, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Ruach, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all Kodashim. So as we just read in Ephesians, we see that it is not a physical battle. We are wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spirits in high places. So let us throw the whole concept like we can handle things in the natural because we cannot. We are going to dive deeper and break down each layer of armor that Yahuwah wants us to put on. So we will be able to be equipped and ready for the attacks of the enemy. So before we break down the particular pieces of armor that we must put on, we first have to understand what type of armor it is. So we are going to go to Exodus, Shemoth and Hebrew, chapter 19, verses 5 and 6. And it says, Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and guard my covenant, then he shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And he shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Yahshuaal. So as we see here, clearly Yahuwah's ultimate desire is to have a nation of kings and priests. And to support this further, we are going to go to Revelation, known as Hazion, chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. And it says, And from Yahushua HaMashiach, who is the faithful witness, and the firstborn of the dead, and the king of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests unto Yahuwah his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 
And we see here once again that through the blood of Yahusha, he's been able to restore that perfect will of Yahuwah to make um, humankind, the remnant, kings and priests. And we're going to go to Haziah chapter 5, 9 through 10 as well. It says, we were made to be kings and priests. And they sung a new song saying, you are worthy to take the sefer, which is the book, and to open the seals thereof. For you were slain and have redeemed us to Yahuwah by your blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and have made us unto our Alua kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth hallelujah so we can go all the way back to the beginning when Yahuwah created Adam and Hua in the garden of Eden his desire was for them to reign and have dominion on the earth but through the fall of mankind, we got away from that. But through Musha, he was trying to restore that. But because the hearts were hardened, we did not walk into the fullness of being kings and priests. So there Yahusha had to come and die. And through his blood, we have the opportunity to be restored back to him. And through the office of kings and priests. That is the armor in which we are to put on so that we will be able to defeat the enemy. So go to uh, Shemoth 28, which is Exodus 28, 2 and 4. And it says, and you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. And you shall speak unto all that are wise hearted, whom I have filled with the Ruach Hakma, which is the Ruach, the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garment to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And these are the garments which they shall make a breastplate, an apod, and a robe, and a broided coat, a turban, and a belt. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Hallelujah. So you see here that Yahuwah is telling Musha that he's going to give the wisdom to some specific people to make a specific garment for Aaron, who was the high priest, who stand in the gap for the people to intercede for them, to intercede for their sins. And we know that Ruachali Yahusha is our ultimate high priest, but we are under Yahusha, supposed to be priest and kings and put on these spiritual garments and another point i wanted to bring out in this passage that you see yahuwah saying that i have made this for your brother for glory and for beauty so let's understand what that glory and beauty is in michelle which is proverbs 31 and 30 it says favor is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman that fears Yahuwah shall be praised. So what beauty is he talking about? The beauty, we have to put on the beauty of the fear of Yahuwah. Because that alone drives out the enemy. And then let's talk about this glory that he's, he's saying, this is what it's made for. The glory that he's seeking, it says in Bemadar, Bemibar, sorry, in Numbers in English, chapter 14 and 21 says that as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of Yahuwah. So through this priestly garment, it symbolizes the glory of Yahuwah. As Yahuwah said that to Moshe, he has made a decree and a promise that Guarantee there's going to be a time where his glory will be on the earth. And through the priesthood is where he utilized in that time through the Levites for his glory to be made manifest through the garment. 
But spiritually, through the death of Yahusha, we are to put on those garments that his glory may be manifest in us. So the first piece of armor that is listed is us having our loins girt about with truth. Some also call it the belt of truth. Um, so when we talk about this, we must first dive into what is truth in its original language. In Hebrew, that is a meth. It's the Strong's H571. And a meth is contracted from the word aman, which is H539. And aman means stability, um, certainty, truth, trustworthiness, assured, establishment, faithful, right, sure, and true. The root of this word, aman, is often translated as believe, but more literally means support. In Isaiah 22, 23, it says, I will drive him like a peg in a place of support. So to believe in Yahuwah is not like a mental exercise of just knowing that the Most High exists, but rather it's our responsibility to show him that we support him in our words, actions, and deeds. And the word amet goes completely in line with that. Its meaning is a firmness, something that is firm, set that is firmly set in place. Psalms White 119 or Telahim 119 142 says, The Torah, the teachings of Alua is a met, which is for it's firmly set in place. It's solid, it's reliable, it does not change. So when we are talking about shotting ourselves, having a belt of truth around us, we must be firmly set in place in Yahusha, in Yahuwah. That way we will not be easily moved by what comes about us, what comes to try to attack us. We have to be strong in and firm in walking with Yahuwah, knowing that he will work it out for our good, no matter what trial and tribulation we are going through. And so what is truth in terms of biblical Yahusha? You know, that is, he is our truth. I'm going to go to Yahukanon 14, 6 and 6, which is John 14, 6 and 6. It says, Yahusha said unto him, I am the way. The amet, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So we must have Yahusha. If we have not died to ourselves and let Yahusha in, there's no way we can be have that belt of truth around us. If we don't have Yahusha as the center of our lives, there's no way that we can defeat any attack of the enemy. And I'm also going to go to Devarim 32, 3 and 4. And it says, Because I will publish the name of Yahuwah, ascribe ye greatness unto our Lua. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, and all of truth, and without iniquity. Just and right is he. And this lets you know Yahuwah is sure he's solid, he's perfect. He has no sin in him. So what we need is to be, like I said, only through Yahusha can we get to Yahuwah. So we have to be anchored in Yahusha so we can be solid in Yahuwah. And so that is why it's so essential to have a personal relationship with Yahusha. One thing that I've learned and in my experience, in my personal walk, people could pray for me. People could try to deliver me, but I wasn't really delivered from certain things until I had a personal encounter with Yahusha. It's like, son of Dawood, have mercy on me. When we have to cry and lay on our face and seek Yahusha, seek the truth that it might come into you and change you and transform your life, that the demons will flee. See, Yahusha, it is no battle for Yahusha to rid us of demons and attacks of the enemy. 
But we must have him to find that, to obtain that, to be grounded and solid in his word, unmovable. And then I'm going to go to Shemuel Rashawn, which is 1 Samuel or 2 Samuel 12, 24. Only for Yahuwah and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he has done for you. So serve him with certainty, with surety, with, with being solid, not being easily moved when trials and tribulations come. Being steadfast in him. Because think about all that he's already done. Think about how he's kept you this far. When we look back over our lives and we think things over, we know that Yahuwah has baracked us and he's kept us. So why do we get so easily shaken when trials and tribulations come? Meditate on his word. That when things happen, you're like, Yahuwah has this. There is nothing for me to worry about. That is why the belt of truth is so important in warfare. And then I'm going to go to Talahim 25 and 10. And it says, All the paths of Yahuwah are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. So if you have his truth in you, if you have Yahushua, you will honor and keep his covenant and his testimonies. And through keeping his covenant and testimonies, you will be strengthened to endure what comes. Then Telahim 33, 4 and 4 says, For the word of Yahuwah is right, and all his works are done in truth. So there's nothing that Yahushua does, because Yahushua is the living word. He's right. We can say the Torah is the word. That's right. There's nothing that Yahuwah has done that isn't right. And all his commandments are sure, like they're solid, they're unmovable. So we need to have this surety in his word. Sometimes we're looking for external things outside of Yahuwah. We're not sure in him. We're not tr having the truth of him wrapped around us. We need that in order to overcome. And then Telahim 119, 151 says, You are near, O Yahuwah, and all your commandments are truth. Telahim 145, 18 says, Yahuwah is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. So if we don't have truth and we're calling upon him, is we don't know that if he's going to come and answer our prayers. This one's very deep in warfare because when we are seeking Yahuwah, we're we're seeking and interceding that he come and fight. Yahushua would come and fight on our behalf. But if we're not walking in truth, is he going to come nigh to us? We don't know. That's his mercy and grace might be. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. Maybe he's like, this is the judgment that they need. The, these de uh, demonic entities are attacking you because you have open doors. So if we want... Uh, to be delivered and we want to be powerful in Yahushua, we must be operating in truth. And it says truth in our inward man. Operating with clean hands and a pure heart. If we do not have that, and we're trying to operate in prayer and do warfare, but there's no truth, you're likely to get further attack. Because the demons will taunt you even more. And then Yahuqanan 16, 13, and 14 says, How be it when he, the Ruach Ameth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and all will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. So the Ruach of Emet, the Ruach of Truth, is the Ruach HaKodesh. We must be filled with the Ruach HaKodesh because that will lead us to all truth and all righteousness. Without the Ruach HaKodesh, we're just flesh. We are just moving in our own power and authority. But when we have the spirit of Yahushua upon us, the Ruach HaKodesh will intercede for us as well. 
to Yahusha. It becomes a greater level of anointing and power giving. But we can't have truth without the Ruach HaKodesh. We must have his Ruach to be able to do spiritual warfare. So the next piece of armor is the breastplate of righteousness. And as we can see right away, it has the 12 precious stones that represents each tribe. So please keep that in mind as we go down and study um, deeper what righteousness means and what it means to have on this breastplate. So we're going to go first to righteousness, strong 664, which is Sadek in Hebrew. And that means accurate, fairly, just, just cause, justice, righteous, righteously, righteousness, rightly, vindication, what is right. And then I also say it's about what is right, just, normal, rightness, justness of weights and measure. And shout out to Jeff Banner, who has done a book about ancient Hebrew, because I'm going to reference this now. And it says, the Hebrew word Sadiq is translated as righteous, and Yashar, Strong's 3477, translated as upright, are paralleled many times in the Bible, indicating that in the Hebrew mind, they were similar in meaning. Upright is another abstract word in the English definition, but it is used in a concrete manner in Hebrew, such as in Jeremiah 31 9, where it means straight as in a straight path. The ancient Hebrews were a nomadic people who traveled a circuit through the wilderness, following the same paths from pasture to pasture, campsite to campsite, and watering hole to watering hole. Anyone leaving this path can become lost and wander aimlessly, one who has departed from the path. So that's a really deep breakdown right there. We're taught in like, Christianity and you know our English language that you know righteous is to try to live a certain type of way, but the reality is we are to just remain on the path or find the path of Yahuwah because we've lost it. So we want to first have the path of Yahuwah and stay on his path and not do anything of ourselves. So as I continue, it says a righteous person is not one who lives a religious, pious life, the com which is the common interpretation of this word. He is a person who follows the correct path. The pathway of Yahuwah. The ability to discern and rightfully judge between good and evil. And that is the true definition of righteousness. You have to have the ability to rightfully discern between what is through, which is what is good, and what is functional, and what is not through, which is dysfunctional, or is not dysfunctional, and to have a just balance and a just weight. And it's also meaning to stay on the paths of Yahuwah. So us being in captivity, and us going in sin and being so farly removed from Yahuwah's way. We have to first, before we can do anything, make sure we are on the right path of Yahuwah. Yahuwah's ways. Yahuwah's path. That's righteousness, to make sure we are staying in line and following his circuit and his order and his way. And then being able to rightfully discern between what is good and evil, what is functional and dysfunctional. So that's why you see the 12 uh, precious stones on Aharon's chest. Because he is to always keep in mind that he is to judge, righteously judge. The nation righteously judged the whole Yashrael between what is good and what is dysfunctional. He is the go-between for um, Yahuwah and Yashrael at that time. So we must think about ourselves in this manner. Wow, so if we are to be priests and have this breastplate on, it's not about us anymore. It's also the ability to rightfully intercede, rightfully judge matters, rightfully pray for matters outside of our own feelings and our own flesh. That is what it means to be a priest. Sometimes you might have to pray for people 
that have done you wrong. Pray for people who you may not fleshly don't like. It's not about us. It's because you're an advocate. You're a representation of Yahuwah on the earth. So we must keep that in mind. If we are saying we want to be spiritually equipped for warfare, because it's not always interceding just for ourselves, but interceding for those around us, for the nation, for the remnant, for all the things that Yahuwah puts on us to pray for. So I am going to go to Yahshua 59 and 17. And it says, For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. And this is obviously talking about prophetically Yahusha. And this is his second coming being prophesied because it talks about vengeance. Um, but he has the breastplate of righteousness on so he is able to righteously discern and judge matters and we are striving to be like Yahusha so we should also have that breastplate on so we are able to righteously discern and judge matters and I'm going to go to Viagra which is Leviticus 19 and 15 and it says ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment you shall not respect the person of the poor nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. And this is essential in so many ministries, so many, anywhere you go. The person looks like they're successful, rich, has money, doing this or that. That often gives them a certain type of favor. Um, if a person is giving you gifts and flattering you with their lips, that often will make your judgment unrighteous because you'll judge them by um, biasly. And Yahuwah already lets it be known from the foundation that we should never be judging people based on um, what they've done for us or what it looks like, but be judging them according to Yahuwah's word and not. But he also lets us know in his word that if you take gifts from people, sometimes that can um, blind your judgment. So you're judging that person based on, oh, they did this for me and they did that for me. So they must be. Um, do good they must be all right but then what happens is because of that we begin to call evil good and good evil so it's so important that when we put on this breastplate that we don't do any unrighteousness and he even says don't be taking don't be so quick to accept gifts from people that you know may have an ulterior motive and even if they don't don't always be just accepting of gifts because that can blind your judgment that is a subtle form of corruption and manipulation that so many people have used. And it goes on to, I'm going to go to Devarim, which is Deuteronomy 6, 24 and 25. And Yahuwah commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear Yahuwah Elua for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we guard to do all these commandments before Yahuwah Elua as he has commanded us. And clearly we know that they didn't. But that's the same petition that has gone out today. Will we guard Yahuwah's commandments as it is this day? It will be unto us for our righteousness if we do. But will we, or will we continue to do our own desires and harden our heart to Yahuwah? See, if we choose, like, I want to be equipped in spiritual warfare, we must, again, I cannot iterate this enough, obey his commandments, Yahuwah's commandments, guard them and carry them as precious. Don't allow situations, make it so easy for us to be disobedient because that's what we oh i wanted to do right but she made me mad or he made me mad so i'm going to choose our righteousness that don't make no sense to you that's just looking for a reason to not obey and clearly we know that the children of yashua they had those we were, they were tried and tested or they didn't have the food that they wanted so instead well the food is what made them act unrighteous then. No, the food was make them that rose up against Moshe. There would always be an excuse to do unrighteous. But when we say, no, Yahuwah, I am choosing your path. 
I'm choosing your way. I'm putting on your breastplate because I know I'm here on the earth to not represent myself, but to represent you. To be able to righteously discern between good and evil. That I might righteously judge all nations. Knowing not that we are to we are going to be one day able to judge Malachim, which is angels, the angels. So it's like if we cannot righteously discern things on earth, we will not be able to righteously discern the supernatural. So this is why we have to make sure we put on this breastplate and make sure that we are truly able to operate in righteousness so he could hear us and so we could also judge matters correctly and behave correctly and stay on the path of Yahuwah because if we are not on the path of Yahuwah no matter what we pray it ain't gonna profit nothing because we're not on his path I'm gonna go to Yahshua Yahu 11 4 through 5 it says but with righteousness Shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth? And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the belt of his loins and faithfulness the belt of his reins. Hallelujah. And that again is uh, Yahusha being prophesied in judgment, in the time of judgment. Um, but this is how we are to be as Yahusha. Being able to judge righteously all matters on the earth. Because as priests, we are intercessors. And Yahusha is the high priest. But in order for us to operate in that function, you must be on the same circuit and path as Yahusha and as Yahuwah. Um, so without that, without the righteousness in our lives, warfare will be pretty much not possible because what happens when you war in a situation um, and you're not even basically you're wandering like they said if you're not in the uh, Yahuwah's circuit and Yahuwah's path you're wandering aimlessly so if you're wandering aimlessly you're not in the covering of Yahuwah and you are now wandering in territories of the enemy so it's by Yahuwah's mercy and grace that he has not allowed the enemy to consume us. But before we do anything with spiritual warfare, we have to get righteous on the path of Yahuwah, learn his ways, learn his ancient paths. Because without that, we're going to be doing this aimless wandering, which is not going to edify anybody. And sometimes I think um, in the spirit realm, haven't you realized the cycles of which we go through? And life in the natural and we're like why do I keep going through this it's because we're wandering aimlessly and not following the path of Yahuwah because in his word he gives us the direction to get to his path but we choose to deny his word that's why we have to have the truth the word of truth in us and to operate in truth then we will be on the path of righteousness and then that's how we also have a protection as we war but when we don't have that we are actually susceptible to greater attacks of the enemy. X piece of armor is the feet shod with the preparation of the besorah of shalom or peace. Um, and before I go into this, I know when people hear the term feet, a lot of people reference about the journey that we are walking on. And I wanted to bring out in Exodus how, what did Yahuwah say? When he was first having an encounter with Musha, he told him to take off his shoes for he was on Kudash ground. Um, but I'm going to read in Exodus before I get ahead of myself. Exodus um, chapter 3 verses 5 through 10, Shemoth in Hebrew. And it says, and he said, draw not nigh hither, put your shoes from off your feet. For the place whereon you stand is Kudash ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Alua of your father, the Alua of Abraham, the Alua of Yashak, and the Alua of Yaakov. And Musha hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Alua. 
And Yahuwah said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Mitzrayim, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Mitzrayim, and to bring them up out of the land into a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanim, and the Hittim, and the Imorim, and the Perizim, and the Hevaim, and the Yevusim. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Yashvayal is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Mitzrayim oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you unto Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Yashrael, out of Mitzrayim. Hallelujah. So, first we need to stand on Kudash ground. This is so important. You cannot deliver anybody or do any type of warfare if you were not sent. So, has Yahuwah sent you? Have you came to Yahuwah and encountered him through Yahushua HaMashiach? And has Yahushua HaMashiach sent you to do this work? Because if he has not sent you, you will not prosper against the attack of the enemy. And where he is, it's Kudash. You don't need to gird up and put on your shoes. But when he sends you out. That is when you'll need your shoes to be on. And I'm going to go to uh, Mazayim, which is Acts um, chapter 12, 8. And it says, And the angel said unto him, Gird yourself and bind on your sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast your garment about you and follow me. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk about the binding on of the sandals or the shoes. And we're going to start off in the Greek and that's the Strong's 5265. And it's Hupadio um, from 5259 and 1210. And it means to bind under one's feet. Put on shoes or sandals. Bind on shod. And another reference is Mark 6, 9, which says, But be shod with sandals and not put on two coats. And then I'm going to go to uh, Strong's H2280. And this is in the Hebrew, and it's Habas. And the usage is bind up, gird about, govern, healer, put, saddle, wrap about. And the definition to wrap firmly, especially a turban, compress, or a saddle, figuratively, to stop, to rule. So even in this context, I wanted to go to the Hebrew because it gives you a little bit more insight. You're wrapping your feet. We're covering them. So what are we covering our feet for? Our feet represents us, our lives, and where we're walking and stepping. We need to cover our feet. Have them wrapped about with Yahusha. Have our journey wrapped around with Yahusha. Only moving where he has told us to move. That is why it's so important to make sure that your feet are shod with the preparation. Because if you're going out to war when you have not properly prepared you're going to be in trouble. Did Yahusha give you the war strategy? Did he let you know how you need to move and walk in this time? See, when we get ready to pray and intercede, we have to have the strategy. Yahusha has have to given us that strategy because our own strategy will fail. Uh, when it comes to spiritual warfare, it's not a physical or carnal thing. Sometimes we start looking at things in the natural, and that's why we start falling. If you're going to go to war, make sure that you're prepared in Yahusha. Make sure that you're spiritually in tune. Okay, and so the next uh, Strong's definition I wanted to bring out is Strong's numbers H6029. And it means 
to bind and to tie, to lace fast. Call, to bind, to tie up, bind around or upon. And um, go to Yashiyahu 61, 1 through 6. It says, the Ruach Adoni Yahuwah is upon me because Yahuwah has anointed me to preach the Basura unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahuwah and the day of vengeance of our Alua, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the Ruach of heaviness, that they might be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of Yahuwah, that he might be glorified, and they shall build the old ways places. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations, and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the stranger shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of Yahuwah. Men shall call you the ministers of our Alua. Ye shall eat the riches of the other nations, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Hallelujah. So when we hear the binding up, it's not just about the feet, but you are called. This is the Basora here. This is what it means to spiritually go to war. Have you been given that direction of Yahusha? Because if you have, you're going to be binding up the brokenhearted. You're going to bring liberty to the captives. You're going to give sight to the blind. You're going to um, free those that are bound. You're going to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahuwah. You're going to comfort those that mourn. You're going to give people beauty for ashes. This is the Basora. So have you been prepared with this Basora? Is this Basora in you? Did Yahushua call you to do this work? Did he gird your feet up and prepare you to do these things? These are what we need to be thinking about. What if he has called me to do these things? Therefore, he would have prepared you and gave you the strategy, changed your life around, woke you up in the morning to pray, have you doing the work internally so you can be effective externally. Has he prepared you? Because if you're not prepared, it will blow up in your face. When you're not prepared, that's when the enemy can defeat you. Yahuwah gives us grace and mercy and sometimes covers us even when we're not prepared. It's through his Ruach Papodesh that we should be leaning on each and every day. Doing this spiritual warfare requires us to sacrifice our flesh daily. Can't be operating in the flesh trying to do a spiritual work. And I wanted to look up the term Besor and the Strongs and that's 1309. And it says Besor is a tidy. The truth is the good news of Yahushua. That's the truth. That is what the truth is. It's the deliverance. It's the salvation of Yahuwah. You're spreading the good news that Yahushua, our salvation, is here. Because that's, if you're being able to be free from all those things, the blind see, the deaf hear, right? Uh, the captives are free. That's the good news of Yahushua. That's salvation. And you can only get that through Yahushua. I wanted to go a little bit deeper. It says, The word Besor is most often used to describe the anticipated deliverance and salvation which would come from the hand of Yahuwah when the long-awaited Messiah appeared to the Lord. Yahshua. And this is from Jeff Banner. So we are to shut up our feet with preparation and knowing that Yahushua is our deliverer. That is the Besor. He will guard the feet of his Hasid, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of Yahuwah shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. Yahuwah shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. And that is Shemuel Rishon 2, 9-10. through 10. Yahuwah will 
fight for us. When we declare his good news, declare that he has sent his salvation, that he has given us Yahushua. Yahushua is that good news. Yahushua is the revelation. Yahushua is all of it. But we have to make sure we're moving as Yahushua wants us to move. That is what putting on these sandals represents. Girding our sandals, preparing ourselves for the walk that we are to endure. The shield of faith. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And the faith in Hebrew is Amonah, which is Strong's 548. And that means something fixed, a covenant, an allowance, certain portion, sure, to be firm in obedience to Yahuwah. So are you fixed? Because that's what it means. The shield of faith, right? You're going to have attacks back. Are you fixed? Do you know that Yahuwah has you? Are you confident? Are you assured that he's going to protect you? Because when they start firing those blows, do you weary? Are you getting worried? If you start thinking like, oh, I don't know if I'm protected, then you don't have the shield of faith. Because the shield of faith is knowing, it's certain. Oh, Yahuwah has this. Yeah, things look crazy, but I'm confident. I put my life on it, Yahuwah has it. That's how confident you have to be. That's what the shield of faith represents. No matter the attacks and the darts that the enemy tries to throw at you, they will not prosper. And you stand firm with that. And I'm going to go to Yahshayahu. 25.1 It says, O Yahuwah Allah, I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Your counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Then Husha 2.20-23 says, I will even betroth you unto me in faithfulness, and you shall know Yahuwah, and it shall come to pass in that day. I will hear, says Yahuwah, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth, and the earth shall hear the grain, and the wine, and the oil, and they shall hear Yisrael, and I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy, and I will say to them which are not my people, you are my people, and they shall say, you are my Alua. And then Habakkuk 2 and 4, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith, by Ammonah. They shall live firmly in Yahuwah. They shall not waver in Yahuwah. They shall stand strong in Yahuwah. No matter what, they don't worry. They don't fret. They stand firm. Because it's a knowing. Faith is really, Amuna is a certainty. It's a knowing. It's not what we have come to believe in English as, oh, we just believe. No, it's a surety. The next piece of armor is the helmet of salvation. When it comes to a helmet, we know that a helmet helps prevent injuries to our heads. To put on Yahushua himself as he is the head and savior of the body. He protects from spiritual death. Putting on the helmet of salvation protects us from the attacks of the enemy to the mind. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8-11 but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For Elua has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Adoni Yahushua Mashiach, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Hallelujah. So we know that the helmet of salvation is our hope in Yahushua Mashiach. Knowing that whether we are alive or in death, that he is with us. No matter what. He is our protector. He is our source. He is our provider. He is our 
husband man. He is our king of kings. He is our salvation. And that's how we have to operate in the Ruach. Nothing, any demon, a principality can do when we know that Yahushua defeated them. They have no power greater than Yahushua's power. We have to just ensure that we have completely cut off any doorways and cut off any um, ways that they can attack us because we've left some type of sin or portal open. That doesn't mean we won't go through trials and tribulations. But with Yahushua as our home end of salvation, we just know no matter what we go through, he's with me. No matter what it is, he died for us. Nothing that I suffer is greater than what he suffered. And that gives us a sense of shalom and um, comfort through life. And rejoicing for the next life. I'm going to Yahshua 59, 16 through 21. And it says, And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness, it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay. Fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. To the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of Yahuwah from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Ruach Yahuwah shall lift up a standard against him, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion. And unto them that turn from transgression into Yaakov, says Yahuwah, as for me, this is my covenant with them, says Yahuwah. My ruach that is upon you, and my words which I have put in your mouth, shall not depart out of your mouth, nor out of the mouth of your seed, nor out of the mouth of your seed seed, says Yahuwah, from henceforth and forever. Hallelujah. So clearly this shows that Yahuwah says there was no intercessor. Hmm, hallelujah. So he sent his right hand to come down and be that intercessor. You put on righteousness as a breastplate and the helmet of salvation upon his head. So he became our salvation. Yahuwah, behold the hand, behold the nail. Yahusha, Yahuwah is salvation. They point to each other for a reason. Yahuwah is our salvation. Through the Yahusha HaMashiach, the physical form of Yahuwah. Yahuwah on the earth. That's Yahusha. And without Yahusha, we have no salvation. And then I'm going to go to Romans 12, 2 and 2. And it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is thub, good, and acceptable, and perfect will of Eloah. So our minds, the helmet of salvation is to guard our minds. It's essential that we renew our mind every day. That we not be conformed to this world, but we renew our mind to what is good and acceptable and the will of Yahuwah. So every day pray for Yahuwah's will to be done in your life. That is another key component to war. What is the strategy for today, Yahuwah. How do you want me to operate today? Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 22-24 says that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the ruach of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after Elua is created in righteousness and true holiness. Hallelujah. So this lets us know that we must put on Yahusha through and have his Ruach HaKodesh dwelling 
in us, to edify us, to purge us, that we may be walking the righteousness and kudoshness that he has called us to walk in. And the next part of the armor is the sword. It's the sword of the Ruach, which is the word of Elua. It says, for the word of Yahuwah is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and Ruach and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him, with whom we have to give account. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the Shamayim, Yahusha the son of Elua, let us hold fast our profession. This is Hebrews 4, 12-14, Erem. Hallelujah. So Yahusha is that word that is sharper than any two-edged sword. He can see the intents of our heart. He can divide our soul and ruach. So this lets you know how powerful Yahushua is, how powerful his word is. And that is why it's so essential that we study the word and that we have a relationship with Yahushua so we could hear the living word that he has for us in the present. He might tell us to do something in the day. If we don't obey, then we're not being obedient. So we have to know his word, the the word that the seafood that we have, we also have to be in tune to having a relationship with Yahushua so we can hear that living word through the Ruach HaKotesh, being obedient to what he tells us to do, not ignoring the things he's dropping in our spirits. And I'm going to go to Shemuel 22-31. Shemuel chapter 22 verse 31. And it says, for Yahuwah, his way is perfect. The word of Yahuwah is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust him. So if we have Yahusha, we're following his perfect way. He will buckle. He's a buckler. He's, he's going to protect us from all things if we trust him. And that is important for warfare. You can't really, if you don't believe, and trust and know Yahuwah and Yahushua to, to do the things that you're asking him to do. Why should he do it? If you believe his word, you have to make sure you're right within as well because it will cut you. That is another thing about spiritual warfare. I'm going to Shemuel, 2 Samuel 23 verses 2 through 4. Says the Ruach Yahuwah spoke by me, and his word was in my tongue. The Lua of Yashrael said, The Rock of Yashrael spoke to me. He that rules over men must be just, ruling in the fear of Alua, and he shall be as the light of the morning, and when the sun rises, even a morning without clouds, as a tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Hallelujah. I brought this out because it just shows us the importance how Yahuwah's word through the Ruach HaKodesh will be spoken through us. The more in tune that we get with Yahuwah, the more he will speak through us. And it's important that we walk upright. Because if you know that, if we are representations of being uh, kings and priests and walking in, being the example of Yahuwah and Yahushua on this earth, if we start faltering and failing, that leads not just you astray, you're leading a lot of other people astray as well. And that's why it's a war. The enemy doesn't want you to prosper because if you do what you're supposed to do, you're going to save a lot of people. But if you fail, a lot of people can be lost. And it says, Telahim 12 and 6. The words of Yahuwah are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. It says, you know how powerful Yahuwah's word is. As we say, Yahuwah, we want more of you. We are going to be tried. We're going to be purified because we are also a word of Yahuwah. He also spoke us into existence. So if you were with him, from the foundation of the earth. And you know that he has chosen you. 
you're going to go through the fire. And you're going to come out as silver tried or you're going to come out as gold tried. All the other people who fade away in that process, they're wooden stubble for you. They were made for you to be edified. They were made so you can walk into what your function is. Telahim 33, 6. It says, by the word of Yahuwah were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. And we know in Yehukanon, one on one, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahuwah. And the word was a Lord. By Yahushua was everything made that was made. I'm going to Telahim 103. 20 and it says bless Yahuwah ye his angels that excel in strength that do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of his word so being obedient the Melakim are obedient to his word we are to be obedient to his word and that way we can be vessels for the word to flow through us and the Melakim will also be obedient to the word that proceeds out of our mouth um, Telahim 119 and 9 Bet wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way By taking heed thereto according to your word Hallelujah And this lets us know how can we cleanse our way By taking heed to the word of Yahuwah Telahim 119, 105 through 107 says Noon, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it, that I will guard your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Yahuwah, according to your word. According to your word, quicken me. So when we are being obedient, we can pray like this, and he will hearken unto our prayers when we are in line with him. That's why you have to know his word to be able to ask him to complete his word in us. Yaakov 1.22 says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So a lot of people like to talk about the word, but they don't actually like to learn and do the word. This is essential as spiritual warfare is concerned. So you're being a hypocrite. It's important that we be true doers of the word, that we practice everything we speak. Because if not, you're going to leave a lot of doorways, which will ultimately end up cutting yourself. Lucas, uh, Luke, which is Luke eleven twenty eight says, But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of Elua and guard it. So it's important that we guard this word. Not only is it a sword to us, we have to guard it for it to be those things. If we don't value it, it's like we're throwing our weapon away. We don't value the word of Yahuwah. We have nothing to protect us. And that's kind of the sad thing. When you look at Yahshua, oh, that's exactly what we did. We threw away our protection. We threw away our protector. We threw away our deliverer. We threw away our king of kings. Oh, we want a king, a human king, just like everybody else. And we had the living Lua. And so now as kings and priests in this day, we cannot operate like that. We have to love the word and guard it. Love Yahushua. Cherish Yahushua. Be obedient to Yahushua. Love every word that he has given us. Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Everything that Yahushua said in the foundation of the world will be done. Uh, Matith Yahoo 4 and 4 says But he answered and said it is written Man shall not live by bread alone But by every word that proceeds Out of the mouth of Yahuwah Which is Yahushua We have to Live in Yahushua He is the manna He is the angel's bread He, he is Life So without him we are nothing. Without him, we will always fail. 
Devarim 8 and 3 says, And he humbled you, and he suffered you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you knew not. Neither did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahuwah man lives. So they rejected Yahushua then, and re they rejected him when he came physically and died on the stake. They rejected their Savior. And the only way we can break the curses off our lives is by being obedient and stop rejecting the one who comes to save us. That's our sword. He, he literally will protect us and avenge us if we walk in obedience. But if we don't, we're just putting our weapons down and we are literally telling the enemy come and feast on us because we're giving them the free access by walking in disobedience. Yehukanon 14.26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Ruach HaKodesh, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So through the Ruach HaKodesh, he will teach us the word. He will teach us his way. And the final thing is that we praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Ruach and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all Kudashim. So I'm going to really dive into the aspects of prayer from a Hebraic perspective. So just bear with me. We're going to utilize some of Jeff Banner's work. So the Hebrew definition for pray is Palal. And this is from the parent root Paul, which literally means speak to authority. The parent root letters being the picture of a mouth and the picture of a staff. The mouth in this case representing speaking and the staff meaning authority. The parent root Paul has the meaning fall. Palal literally means to fall down to the ground in the presence of one in authority to plead a cause. It is a coming to one in authority to intercede or plead on one's own behalf or for another. This word palal also means judgment. In Old Testament times, the major judicial decisions were made at the gates and entrances to the city. One reason being it was a broad area and easy for people to gather there. If anyone had a grievance, they would go and speak to authority to obtain the justice how they were looking for. The ancient Hebrew concept of a judge is one who restores life. The goal of one that judges or rules is to bring a pleasant and righteous life to the people. In the same way, I believe Yahuwah is surprised when we assume how to pray without discerning what he wants us to do and thus what we should ask for. So, and if we keep all this in context from an ancient Hebraic perspective, we need to be praying things that are aligned to Yahuwah's will. That he give us the things to pray. Um, another word from the Paul root is Paula. Added to this root is the letter Aleph. First Chronicles 16, 12. Remember the wonders he has done, his signs and his spoken judgments which in its original picture form is an ox head meaning strength. This word means perform. A great work performed is an act of intercession out of judgment. It is translated wonder, marvelous, and extraordinary. Pala is used primarily with Yahuwah as its subject, expressing actions that are amazing and extraordinary. Often you will see that many times over in Psalms. Example being Psalms 118.23, and in our eyes, it is amazing. Interestingly, the first use of this word is in Genesis 18.14. Is anything too hard, palal, for Adoni? Yet, on the other hand, Yahuwah does not require anything of us that is too difficult, palal. Deuteronomy 30.11. This certainly lifts our faith to new heights, of trust in Yahuwah for awesome things when we pray. So when we pray, um, we have to remember that Yahuwah is 
the source. We're seeking to do his will on the earth. We're seeking um, to be a representation of Yahuwah on the earth. So everything that we pray should be walking and according to his word and not according to our own thoughts and our own desires. So another word that I wanted to bring out in Hebrew is paga. And you'll see that it has pay, which is the picture of a mouth. The first new picture form in this word is the picture of a foot. It means to walk, gather, and carry. It has a G sound. Paga means a chance, meeting, or encounter, or to place as a meeting. This could be an impingement, which figuratively means to attack with persistent request. It can be persistently even to the point of annoyance. When we read this, we are immediately drawn to the parables and sayings of Yahushua concerning asking and seeking and knocking. No doubt Yahuwah loves us to impinge on his wonderful grace to enable those we pray for to fulfill the role they were intended for. An unripe fig becoming ripe. An actual fact that the parent root of Paga, the word Pag. So basically, Paga is another level of prayer that um, we have to be consistent um, to put our petitions forth to your Lord so that he will hearken unto our request. So going on, in actual fact, the parent root of Paga, the word Pag, means unable to fulfill the role intended for an unripe fig. The third picture added to this parent root is the picture of an eye which means experience, to see, to know, and understand. And prayer we desire to ask for those who are living unfulfilled lives without Yahuwah, or lives with affliction and inability, because we have experience and know what Yah can do for them. Having received this experience from such a benevolent and kind creator should challenge us to walk as close to him as we can. This will enable Yah to touch our hearts in prayer, to experience at times how other people feel, and also how he himself feels. This is an immense honor. So that is what we are to do. As like I mentioned before, being priests and intercessors, kings and priests, you are now a liaison to feel what Yahuwah feels, to feel what other people feel, and to ask Yahuwah to have their, his will be manifested in their life, that they may experience him like we are able to experience him if it be according to his perfect will so um you go to isaiah 53 12 it says well actually bearing the sin of many and interceding for the offenders so that is what it is to be kings and priests to be servant leaders as yahushua literally he took on sin who knew no sin we are to take on the pains and the griefs and the sorrows that we see and intercede on behalf of the people intercede for the remnant intercede for the return of our people to Yerushalayim Isaiah 59 15 says Adonai saw and it displeased him that there was no justice he saw there was no one and was amazed that no one had interceded therefore his own heart brought him salvation and I read that earlier by praying in the name and authority of Yahushua HaMashiach, we are acknowledging that he alone is our savior. And we are asking him to intercede and bring the salvation to each and every one of our petitions. The most common noun for prayer in scripture is tefillah, which has the same Paul root and comes from the word palal. And this is the Strong's 8605. In spiritual warfare, it is essential that we pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 23 says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of Elua and Mashiach Yahushua concerning you. Quench not the Ruach, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, Abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very Alua of Shalom sanctify you wholly. And I pray to Yahuwah that your whole ruach and soul and body 
be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Adonai, Yahushua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. In closing, Mishpacha, we must daily put on the full armor of Yahuwah in every aspect of our lives. It starts in the spirit. I pray that this lesson is able to strengthen you in your walk and your prayer life and the way you speak, talk, and operate. I pray that before you pray, you are intentional with putting on each one of these things. You ask yourself, did I put on my armor before I even brought a petition for it? I pray that through Sabi Yahuwah, in the name and authority of Yahushua Mashiach, that you continue to shape and mold us the way in which we should go, that you would have us to operate and be, that we may fulfill your will on the arrests as you have one a nation of kings and priests. Help us to forsake the things of this world and choose you. Help us to no longer operate in any form of rebellion. Help us to lean on you, Abba Yahusha, as you are the living word. Help us to not just send petitions up, but to hear you and hear your will and hear your words. Give us this divine connection to you that we might rightly discern between what is good and evil, what is functional and dysfunctional. That we might be in tune to your ancient paths. That we no longer waver to the left or right. Help us to keep diving deeper and deeper in the spirit. And forsaking the things of this world. And not being distracted by them. And all these things I ask in the name and authority of Abba Yahushua HaMashiach, my high priest, my Malek HaMalekim, the Adonai of Adonai. Hallelujah. Aman. Let it be done in the Eretz as it is in the Shalai. Shalom, Shalom, Mishpaka. I love you. And I pray that this ignites a fire in you to continue to dive deeper in your spiritual walk that you might in your life and defeat the attacks of the enemy and be a light to those around you that you might be an intercessor for them. Shalom, shalom.